allow me to explain to you briefly what the difference is between someone who is truly passionate about the automobile and a car enthusiast. The latter is someone who loves exotic, high-powered performance vehicle that cost hundreds of thousands or even millions of dollars that go fast, look great, exotic, and all of that. And I'm totally cool with that because I do feel that myself. But only someone who is truly passionate about the automobile will get excited by this. I swear to you, I'm on all my meds and I don't do any substance abuse or whatnot. Yes, I am very excited about the all-new 2023 Toyota Prius. Um, in fact, I go so far as to say that it's probably in my top five cars that I've driven in 2023 so far. Yes, there was a Carrera T and that was unbelievably cool. And there were a few other cars, but what I, what I truly enjoy, love the Porsches, um, is driving people that, driving people, driving cars and SUVs and all that, that I could almost afford in many cases, and that most of you actually buy and drive. And that's where this car just absolutely fits in. Um, just quickly, right? The Toyota Prius, when it came out in 2001, 2001 model year in North America, I think it was 97 in Japan, um, or 98. Uh, well, you know, I drove it brand new as a press car, and it, it was okay, right? It was very novel and unique. And then the follow-up generation came out for the 2004 model, the second generation, and then the third generation was 2010. That's when things started to get interesting. As far as styling is concerned, as far as performance, we understand each other, performance for a Prius, right? And then the, 20, uh, the 2016 model year, sorry, brain farts. Um, that, you know, that was cool for the fourth generation, but, but now everything, except for the Prius name, has changed with the all new fifth generation Prius. And I don't know, just, you know what? Do a quick search on the interwebs or Google it, okay? Toyota Prius Modified 2023, and you will see some of the craziest looking brand new Priuses, you know, slammed on the ground with massive three-piece BBS wheels or anything else with, with I mean, they're slammed. They have stands. And all it is, it's just a lowered ride height with wheels and the car looks, it's breathtaking. Even in this, Base SE Prius Prime. I think it's absolutely fantastic looking. And better, better yet, it's so good to drive. And we'll go over the visual stuff in just a few moments with the walk around and all that. But um, what Toyota has done for the 2023 model year in Canada, especially, is packaged it where all you have to do, I mean, other than budget, is figure out if you want all wheel drive, or if you want 72 kilometers of full EV range. That's the only choice you really have to make. And then you go with trim. And, and I think it's absolutely brilliant that they've done it this way. And I'll, I'll, I'll touch on that in just a few moments, but I'm, I mean, I think you can tell by the enthusiasm, the passion in my voice, that I am loving this car. And it's, it's the styling, the packaging, the driving experience, and the unbelievable, unfathomable efficiency. Because let's face it, in 2023 going forward, fuel prices are not gonna go down and efficiency will rule. That's why EVs are doing relatively well, those that are available, but things are getting better. And why eventually, you know, especially over Toyota, there will be nothing that will not be, well, that won't be electrified in the very near future. I mean, the Sequoia is only available as a hybrid, right? And the Tundra has a hybrid version. And if you look from the top down, it only makes sense. And just to conclude the introduction, I still believe that Toyota's approach in 2023 now, if they're preparing for 27, 26, 28 properly, is the absolute best. Where in a nutshell, they can put a ton of hybrids and plug-in hybrids on the road with the one single battery they would put in the BZ4X. If you look at it that way, efficiency-wise, globally speaking, there's, there's, just, there's genius behind that. As long as 26, 27, 28, more EVs come out, and they will. Okay, so that's it, conclusion. So the walk around, and then the uh, quiet and relatively spirited drive for a Prius, of course, coming right up.
Okay, I'm just gonna put it this way. I mean, I was just describing, you know, a slightly modified Prius that you'll find, pictures of slightly modified Prius you'll find on the web. Uh, but, um, but by all accounts, this is a stunningly racy, well sorted visually with excellent proportions. Uh, it's, it's just a really good looking car. The rear taillight treatment is fantastic. Uh, the handle is just under here, by the way. I don't know if you saw that. I didn't bend down enough. Um, and uh, it looks sinister, at least this one does, in its uh, uh, guardian gray paint hue with the uh, black hubcaps, which will make great winter wheels, especially if you live in Quebec. Uh, so you just have to get some nicer wheels maybe for summer, which will probably affect fuel consumption, but I don't know. It, it's so efficient that, you know, what's a tenth of a liter per hundred kilometers between friends? The front end is, is, is not menacing, but it just has character. It has personality. And, um, and for, in, a, in a rare instance for Toyota, even the base model looks good. Say compared to BZ4X or a few other models, the, the, the base versions look definitely absolutely poor man spec. Whereas this, not even remotely close. Um, Pricing in the U.S. starts for the regular Prius, $27,400. The Prime starts at $32,350. Canada, very, very different pricing structure. $36,650 for the base Prius. This is the non-Prime. One of the major differentiating factors is the fact that all-wheel drive is standard in the two regular Prius trims. If you start with the Prime, base price is $38,150 for the SE, that is correct, my friends. And then if you look up the different trims, XSE or the XSE Premium, if you go all the way to the top, you're looking at $46,990. Between us, friends, this is the version to get. I mean, there are only a few faults that I can think of with this car. Um, one of them I'll tell you right now because I'm probably gonna forget later is that lumbar support is abhorrent. In other words, it does not exist in the front seats. So uh, 45 minutes behind the wheel of this, if uh, you're getting your pushing, you know, to your late 40s, uh, you're not gonna like the seating. But otherwise, the seats are generally comfortable. But that's it. Okay, just to give you an idea, for the, in the base car, uh, regular Prius, eight inch touchscreen, wireless Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, heated front seats, 19 inch wheels, and aforementioned all wheel drive. If you go into the Prime, slight changes. I mean, you get 17 inch wheels instead of 19s, that's fine. It's front wheel drive only, by the way. Eight inch display, wireless, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, heated front seats and steering wheel, booyah. Uh, and then, I mean, if you really have to go up to the XSC and other trims, I mean, you're looking at leather, 12.3 inch touchscreen, a panoramic sunroof, all kinds of things that will gnaw away at your fuel efficiency, add unnecessary weight and unnecessary cost. Speaking of cost, in Quebec, this car is eligible for up to, a Quebec with federal uh, government incentive, up to $7,500 in incentives. So essentially, essentially, if you buy, say, this model, the SE, it's gonna turn out to be about $5,000 cheaper than the base all-wheel drive Prius. That is effing nuts. I'm, I don't know. All-wheel drive is always the option for me, but this Prime is turning out to be uh, a lot of fun. Um, what else can I add? I mean, should we go? Yeah, okay, let, let, let's, let's tour my 2023 Guardian Grey Prius. Okay, so the handle's down there. So this is 575 liters. I probably should have taken the uh, shade off. But 575 liters of trunk space. It's very usable. There isn't per se any room. Maybe if you squeeze stuff into, under there, it's, you know, one of those uh, reusable bags and stuff like that. Oh, and the cable popped out. Fantastic. All right. Anyway, good size trunk for the size of the car. This car is almost 4.6 meters long. I don't know what that is in feet exactly, but it's, it's much bigger than you think it is, but it's still really, really compact. Uh, you know, Handle up here, fine, I can deal with it. Uh, oh, should have removed my bag. Didn't think of that. Um, the amount of space back here is surprisingly good. Yes, okay, so now the booster seats replace the big baby seat, so it looks like there's more space, but in, in fact, there is. You still would not be able to fit an adult or even a small child between the two seats, but because the floor is almost flat, 
and the roof line does not dive down too fast. I mean, ingress and egress is good. There's just an amazing amount of room back here. It's amazing. It, I just said amazing. I say amazing again, why not? Okay, so inside, I mean, it, it's funky Toyota Prius stuff as always with the displays. Actually, we'll just get in, uh, but fit finish, it's good. It's just fine. It's what you expect, say, in a $38,000, $40,000 car from an automaker like Toyota. It looks durable. Everything comes together nicely. Good door bins. It's, it's, just, it's, just, it's good is what it is. Now, these are the seats. They look great. A little bit soft, but relatively comfortable. But the absence of lumbar support is murder. You can always buy a $30 cushion at Walmart, which is what I did years ago. Okay, so... Here's your digital readout. Now, depending on where you position a steering wheel based on your driving position, uh, it becomes a little bit of an issue. I had to bring it down a little bit more than I typically do, uh, but the readout is, is pretty straightforward. Uh, it does change slightly when you use the menus. Nothing spectacular there. A heated steering wheel right there. Uh, there's your fuel door, which is always strange to have a fuel door button, but anyway. So this is the eight inch display. So when you get into the uh, upper trims you do get a full 12.3 which i guess is kind of nice but between you and me eight inches is more than enough <clears throat> um yeah and, and everything functions really really well i say that and oh there you go okay that was the first time that it wasn't entirely responsive everything is very straightforward i love the fact that you have very straightforward again hvac controls your heated seats air conditioning all the controls usb for the try for for the smartphones i never use wireless i always plug in because it's just a lot more reliable so typical prius right drive uh, max regen back into drive uh, working through the phone park so your hold button i love that button um, but it can become annoying in stop and go traffic but if you're out of light that's nice um, we don't i did but we don't uh, so auto ev ev um, ev charge hold it, 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 you have a number of options but honestly so with the drive modes, drive modes, I've been, as you can see, I believe, in eco almost all week. I mean, you, I have, I have played with normal sport. I didn't even bother customizing custom. Eco just works absolutely well, and uh, the fuel efficiency is just mind-boggling. I'll tell you more about that in a few seconds. But storage is very good, very good, nice. I love this that you can actually just slide your phone into it. And uh, look, the dashboard is actually really cool. I love the two-tone business. Uh, it, it pops out, but it's not intrusive. And uh, visibility. Visibility is exceptional. Look at that. I mean, the base of the A-pillar is actually fairly large, but because this window stretches out so far towards the front, I mean, you can almost see through it. And my friends, it just gets better as we drive off. So let's do that. I'm, uh, I, I reiterate the fact that I am not ill, taking all my meds as prescribed by the doctors, um, because I'm about to tell you that driving this is fun, fun. I swear to you, the, the crucial, most important reason for that is that this car is light. The Prime with the battery weighs about 3,500 pounds. That's the base SE. The other ones are a little bit more, are a little bit uh, heavier, which um, are all a little bit heavier than the all-wheel drive version because of the battery by about 200 pounds. So if we were to compare, say, front-wheel drive non-Prime to the other one, there's probably a closer to 500, 450 to 500 pound difference. But even so, at 3,500 pounds, and by today's standards, that is a featherweight of cars and it can be felt in the steering there's nothing organic or uh, real or natural about the drive but if, if you get into it and you allow the, the lack of communication to or you don't allow the lack of communication to bother you this thing is tossable i mean just the low rolling resistance tires uh, dis disagree all the time <laughs> but you know that's how you anyway point is that it's light it's nimble it's agile and the chassis setup is ultra comfortable with these 17 inch wheels and it handles just fine you don't need the 19s yeah it makes the car look a little bit sportier it's a Prius so then you get 19 inch wheels or 20 inch BBS three-piece wheels and then you just go all the way with the stance and the camber and the um 
Now, about the powertrain, which is the differentiator. If you take, it's a new two liter engine, which is, well, new for the Prius, I should say. And uh, it's a different animal. In the base, all wheel drive base, non-prime is better to say, total system output is 196 horsepower. When you get the prime, you're looking at 220 horsepower. Now that's the equivalent, that's like, you know, talking about the old uh, 2005 Mustang with a four liter V6 and comparing it to a GT500. No, no, I'm exaggerating because you really can't feel the difference. I haven't driven the base car, but it doesn't feel like this thing has 220 horsepower. But what you do feel is instant torque. Essentially, no matter how fast you're going, the difference will be that if you're already doing 90 kilometers an hour and you want to pass, uh, then the torque, but then not much goes on, which is fine. And in the city, it's, it's very, very satisfying. It, it's, this car, if you buy a Prius, it's a mood alterer because your focus becomes efficiency. When the battery is fully charged, it'll give you an estimated 72 kilometers of EV range. I've had indicated a little bit more than that. 74, I think, was the max that I saw. And so far, I've done a few hundred kilometers, and I don't even know that I've consumed five liters, maybe seven liters of fuel. And the efficiency is extreme. And, I mean, if you've seen a few of my videos, I do tend to like to, you know, test cars. And I'm doing the same thing with the Prius. I'm essentially acting as though it was my own and just benefiting from the maximum EV-ness. And um, I, in these conditions, although today it's excruciatingly warm, um, and with the AC, I mean, the range is, doesn't seem to be totally, completely affected, but as always in the winter, expect a 20, 25% range loss, which once you hit 72, let's understand each other, in a PHEV, you lose 20%, it's not crazy. You know, then you're down to hover around 60K. And I will follow what I just said by saying that I am an opponent of the pu uh, plug-in hybrid electric vehicle because I think it's smoke and mirrors. But I have, that usually applies to any PHEV that will give you between 35 and 45 kilometers of EV range because it's essentially pointless and you end up consuming more fuel no matter what. But see, in the case of the Prius EV, uh, PHEV Prime, because effectively the governments, depending on where you live, in Quebec, for example, you're being paid to take this car. So that's just win, 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 okay? Two, fuel efficiency ratings are very close one to the other. So if you get a non-prime, it is rated at 4.8 liters per 100 kilometers. Now remember, that's with all wheel drive. So if you go with the prime, you're looking at about 4.5 liters per 100 kilometers and that applies to the SE if you look at the XSE or the XSE premium I think you add 0.4 liters per 100 kilometers to the overall fuel consumption uh, fuel consumption numbers either way because of Toyota's hybrid systems being so efficient I believe that even in winter you will not consume more than 4.8 liters per 100 kilometers which is what you get in a regular car so this kind of circles back to the fact that well you, the the decision is your budget and whether you want ev range or all-wheel drive or all-season traction um so far i mean i'm having as i think i've mentioned a few times i'm having way too much fun driving the prius prime because it's so comfortable because it's so efficient it's spacious it looks Insanely good for a Prius. <clears throat> I suspect that the all-wheel drive model will give you a little bit more of a punch, kind of like with the Sienna, if you get a front-wheel drive or if you get an all-wheel drive, it's the same total output, though in this case there is a difference. Um, but I'd probably lean towards the all-wheel drive. But when you think that you'll get the equivalent of about $2,000 back when you take this, and if you do plug it in at every possible occasion, as I have all week, uh, you might not fill up for weeks, thanks to the 72, the estimated 72 kilometers of range. The Prius is a brand unto its own, so it might have a number of competitors, but if you want a Prius, you want a Prius. 
No Honda EV, or sorry, PHEV or hybrid is as efficient as this. And realistically, $38,000 for a plug-in hybrid, large compact car, I dare I say it today in 2023, that's almost a bargain. Look, he, he, the, the answer, well, only you have the answer, but as far as I'm concerned, if you want something compact and ultra efficient, there are effectively two choices. There's the Corolla hybrid and there's the Prius. If you want all-wheel drive, you can go for both. If you want a plug-in hybrid, this is the only option. I'm, I'm truly looking forward to the few days remaining that I have with this car uh, because I, I love every second behind the wheel of it. I feel smarter and wiser driving this car. That's probably just me. Thank you.